Welcome to Retrobot, the YouTube channel where we feed a friendly space robot a diet of pure nostalgia. I'm Clay, and tonight we are doing another review of Tough Trailer. And I know you don't actually know that this is another review, and that's because the one that I recorded was crap and I didn't post it. So, now I'm here doing the review over, and hopefully doing it live, I'll do a better job. We can hope. So, that being the case, let's jump right in. This is Tough Trailer. This is Machine Robo's Tough Trailer, and uh, this is a new version of a toy that was first released in 1986, but never made it to the United States Probably, maybe, because he would have had to compete with another big blue truck guy that was the star of Transformers the movie and voiced by Robert Stack, who shall remain Ultra Magnus. So, here he is. He's Tough Trailer. This version, even though his name is Tough Trailer, does not come with a trailer. Uh, it, it's just a truck, a really cool truck. But we're not going to talk about that yet because I want to show off the uh, packaging just a little bit. It's uh, it's nothing, nothing too snazzy, but it is a very nice package. When you order it, it comes in a nice big box. You see the graphics on the front showing both the robot mode and the vehicle mode prominently displayed in full color glossy imagery and then we have a, uh, a version of the vehicle mode on the side here and the robot mode on this side and then on the back you've got well uh vehicle mode robot mode and the display stand that it comes with plus some gobbledygook and other stuff so you know pretty basic package pretty awesome this is machine robo 09 and uh and this is pretty cool this comes from the revenge of chronos line so that's the box uh, i could open this there'd be a bunch of plastic trays in there but i'm not gonna so when you get this there are a ton of parts that come with it that enable you to make your own display stand. And uh, that was one of the things that I spent quite a long time on during the last unboxing video, taking pieces out and trying to assemble them into some kind of a display stand that made sense. And uh, what I'm noticing about these, uh, the Machine Robo's toys all come with these construction kits for their own display stands. And uh, this figure being a very, very large one comes with a lot of pieces. Now, I also have Bike Robo, and it comes with a smaller display stand. Uh, from what I can tell, they're the same pieces. There's just fewer of them to make a smaller stand. And it gives you places to put weapons, and you can reconfigure them in a lot of different ways. And there's a lot of really neat pieces with this. But one thing that I did notice that was kind of surprising and a little bit disappointing is that despite all the little tabs and slots and things and all the different little bits that make up all of this, it's not nearly as versatile as you would hope for. You know, you look at all these parts and you think that you could configure it to be really any way that you want, but you'll find that the hole patterns are a little bit limiting in terms of where you can stick different parts and have them fit securely. So uh, it's, it's a nice add-on. I think that the display stands help to give that feeling of a display piece and not just a toy which is important when you're paying as much money as you are for these machine robos figures because uh, honestly uh, th these guys are not cheap they are very very cool and very very well made but uh, but they are not for the faint of heart so that being the case let's get to the main event because honestly um, 
I mean, the display stand is nice, but I don't care about the display stand. Just don't care. Uh, if they stopped including it, it'd be like, hmm. But I, I, I don't think that I would cry a river over it. So here is Tough Trailer. And this is, this is where you get to the meat and potatoes of everything. This guy is kind of 80s-tastic. I mean, he is exactly what we thought that the future would look like in the 80s. And let me just adjust the lighting because I want to make sure that you can really appreciate everything that's going on here. Uh, he is a very, he has a very impressive vehicle mode. Uh, as only the imagination of someone from the 80s and in Japan can visualize. I love the eight-wheeled front, you know, the dual axles in the front, uh, and then you've got the same thing in the back. Uh, I love the very geometric lines, you know, lots of hard edges, and and, and this this whole thing here, it it almost it almost looks like it's half train, half truck. Uh, it's it's tremendously unique, and I really really like it. Uh, you can compare this to the internet version, which uh, which I have a view right here, and you can see that uh, they have kept the design uh, pretty consistent from uh, from his original version. Uh, it had this robot mode, which for a 1980s uh, machine robo or gobot figure is about par for the course. It's not bad. It's uh, not tremendously exciting. Uh, and then you can see that we had the truck with a trailer. And of course, that trailer uh, opened up into a battle platform, not unlike Optimus Prime's. Uh, I will say that this one doesn't have a cool module here with a robot arm and whatever that other thing was that was sort of like a cross between a battle axe and a satellite dish but still there's a lot of similarities there's there's also no roller but uh but yeah this uh i, I have to say that if i had the opportunity I, I would love to get my hands on one of these but i have a feeling that uh, they would want a lot more money than I really want to part with. So let's take a look again at the brand new version. And this is a really solid toy. It feels heavy. It feels like quality. Uh, it, it is tremendously solid in its vehicle mode. And then it also has weapon storage underneath, which as I've been messing with it, uh, a couple of the pieces have come loose and they just peg in. You can see that there's some tabs under here that, uh, that hold that in. Uh, it doesn't hold it in as securely as I'd like, but it does hold it in as long as you don't mess with it while you're showing it on YouTube. There's also this half of the assembly, which is in the back, and I can, I can pull that out for you because we're going to have to take it out when we transform it anyway. So let's, uh, let's just dislodge this piece so that we can get a finger under there. And, uh, and then we can put that back in place. And there he goes. So, yeah, look at that. That is a cool looking vehicle. Everything about him, I love the translucent orange with the silver behind it. It's really cool. It looks sort of like a Mad Max vehicle before the end of society happened. And I mean, the, the only way that could be more awesome is if it looked like a Mad Max vehicle after the end of society happened. You can see that all the parts really fit together very nicely and very tight. It's just a really, really good, solid, and imaginative vehicle mode for, uh, for a pretty cool toy. So 
That is his vehicle mode. But of course, we need to transform it. So let's go ahead and uh, yeah, yeah, we can. Oh, you know what? Yeah, before we before we transform it. Uh, now there's no peg here, but uh, you can see uh, he he would. Well, that he might have trouble with that. Let me try the the uh, other one. Yeah. The, okay. Oh, this is this is a masterpiece trailer. Well, that fits. <laughs> that's that's actually pretty good. Now uh, he's got a hole there, and there's no peg here, so we'd have to do an adapter. But but I like the look, so I, I feel like there's potential here uh, for Tough Trailer, to, because I feel like a guy that's called Tough Trailer really needs a tough trailer you know there there's only so much that i could do with that one i apologize so here we go this is tough trailer and we do need to turn him into a robot and it's it's not bad it's not a bad conversion but it, it does require a little bit of finesse so the first thing that uh, that i'm gonna do is I'm going to open up the side panels here. There are two little panels that lock into each other. And so we can just open those up sort of like little doors and do the same thing on the other side. And of course, I've already taken out the, the weapons and we'll put those together after we turn them into a robot. And then we've got, you, you already saw that the wheels they, they have these little hooks here that just kind of hook in to the side and then let go. And then there's on, they're on these long linkages that have many joints on them. So we're going to disconnect both of those from the rest of the rest of the chassis and then swing it down like that. And then we're just going to kind of ignore the front end for the moment. The next thing that we're going to do is these uh, these panels kind of unclick from each other and you can see that there are these double hinges here. So they're gonna pivot out away like that. And at the same time, you need to disconnect it from the arm that it's tabbed into. And it grips pretty solidly. You can see how that really wants to stay in there so much so that this popped off the hinge. Uh, but it just pops right back in so not a big deal, but uh, but it, it does happen We're gonna try and do this one and there we go We got it to disconnect and then we can fold this Back out of the way now notice what's happening here. Like I said, these are double hinges So it actually kind of goes down and then out so it is down and out in Beverly Hills, except that we're not in Beverly Hills and nobody remembers that movie. I don't think I even saw that movie. I, I remember it existing, but I never saw it. So we've got some robot arms and some shoulders in, uh, in a prime location for robot shoulders that turn into a truck. I, I'm sorry. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night and I've got a very small head. So uh, we can fold down the smokestacks if you want and then you can bring the the arms forward uh, and yeah you saw that the shoulder joint despite being very big and actually reasonably stiff uh, it, I was able to pull it out pretty easily and uh, you know on one hand I, I, I don't want the joints to pop apart, but on the other hand, uh, I appreciate joints that would rather pop apart than break. Uh, I don't feel like I'm at a real risk of breaking this toy because as I mentioned uh, earlier, it is very, very solid. So we can, uh, we can even flip the head out and the head is right in here and it just folds up like that. There's very little clearance around this hinge. So it takes a little bit of finessing and then you can turn it around forward 
And, uh, and so the, uh, I got a question from my ear. Uh, what is he made of? Is it die cast? Uh, sadly, no. He is not made of die cast metal. Uh, it seems to be uh, mostly plastic. Uh, if I encounter some die cast metal parts, I will point them out. But, uh, you know, they're, they're, mm, it's hard to tell. Uh, I don't notice any die cast metal so far. But, uh, but uh, he does have, uh, but the, the plastic is very, very dense and heavy. So, so we've got his, his hands in sort of the, the crane position, I guess. And, uh, and, and they don't have to stay that way. This is a really, really cool maneuver. Watch what happens here. The arm opens up like that. And then the wrist is on a, a hinge. And then that panel is on a hinge. So you can straighten out the arm and then close it down and give him a normal arm. Now, here's the other thing. Um, there's... There's this little detail here. Now you see how that's just got a hole. The other side of the elbow has a line. And when you're turning him into truck mode, you need to make sure that that line is on the outside. If you have the elbows rotated the wrong way when transforming him into vehicle mode, his pieces won't quite fit together. It'll be close but it won't be quite right and it'll be very difficult for you to tell what part is is off and i'm telling you right now watch those hinges in vehicle mode the side with the line should be out and actually i like that side better so i'm also going to have that on the outside when he's in robot mode and you see how the hinge yeah, this, this whole elbow is on a swivel both at the bicep and at the forearm. So that gives him a lot of articulation, but it also makes for a potential frustrating little nugget when you're trying to figure out how to get him into truck mode. And he's so close, but things just don't quite fit. So let's go back and do the other arm now that I've tangented I'm standing by the word tangented, by the way, because um, did I mention I didn't get much sleep last night. So there we go. We've got the other arm in a nice position. We're going to spin around that elbow and then put his forearm in a nice position. And now at this point, we can start working on the front end a little bit. So we're going to pull, we're going to pull the legs down and forward and you see how that happened just pull it down and forward and this whole front grill slides out from around this little facade on the on the front body panel now once you disengage that we are really close you can just pull the legs down and now the entire lower torso is on this swivel piece so you want to get that out of the way and you can even drop the rest of the legs down and that'll help get things out of the way. And since you're, since you're doing it, you can look on the underside of this hood piece and you can flip out these little pieces here and then that can fold down and they can collapse around this central linkage here in the abdomen. So we've got this little bit of extra schmutz right here. And, uh, and this actually uh, transforms pretty nicely. We take these side panels and we're just going to fold them up underneath. And we're going to do the same on this side. And then we can fold those down like that. And now we can take these and remember that they were on these double hinge pieces. Well, they do this very, very clever little thing. And look at that. Look at how nice and compact that is. It's going to go up against his back. You can see there's this socket right here and this tab on the back of the piece that holds the head. 
they are going to engage which is going to lock the head into place and now with the arm out of the way you can rotate that little bit of back kibble and swivel it down and put it on his back where it's out of the way and it looks very nice so now for the legs we're getting really close here you can take these side panels they are also on double hinges there's a lot of double hinges and uh and actually you pull these these linkage pieces out of the way and before we before we deal with this actually let's do the feet the feet the front end of the uh the truck bumper and uh, the piece with the headlights snaps into the rest of the foot and so we need to unsnap it first and once you've done that you rotate this sideways this is a little bit th th this hurts your brain sometimes but uh but you rotate it sideways and then you're going to rotate it 180 degrees like that and then at this point you can now rotate it back so that the foot faces forward and now you can slide the wheels in about an eighth of an inch and that's really important because if you slide those in too early you will struggle to get that foot to flip around so don't slide it in i know you're gonna want to because it feels like it's time but it's not do the foot first so now that these are slid in out of the way we can take this side panel and fold it the rest of the way against the leg and there's even a little tab here that goes into this little rectangular slot and it snaps in oh that sounds good that sounds really good so now we have this little bit of linkage here it's going to fold like that and like that and then the wheels are going to wrap around and then fold against the back of the leg and and that's really cool that is really cool i love that i love the look of it i love how they how they made that all go together it's brilliant and tremendously satisfying so did you did you take notes because i, I need you to tell me how to do that okay you were right we will do exactly what you just said so we're gonna get this out of the way we're going to pull the the front end forward we are going to unsnap that bumper we are going to rotate it so that this part of the grill is lined up with those wheels that you have not pushed in yet we're going to rotate the whole foot assembly around 180 degrees and then if you haven't already you're going to make sure that that bumper is down here and then you can rotate that forward now you can push those wheels in flat against the side of the leg you can take this panel here on the side and you can snap it down in it's going to lock into place you're going to feel good and then we're going to fold this piece up like that and this down and then we're going to just fold it back and just squeeze everything together like that and now we have tough trailer in his robot mode uh, there do seem to be some little pegs and some slots that this is sort of supposed to fit into um at least it looks like it does I, I i don't really have a whole lot of success with that uh and and actually i don't advise it anyway and i'm going to show you why so here he is in his robot mode and let's go ahead and go to the other camera so that you can really appreciate the details because there's some really cool stuff on this guy but there are some things that uh that are worth noting that's like Ah, ah, why? Oh, so let's go ahead and switch cameras. And there we go. So let me move him out of the way and adjust the aim here. 
So yeah, there he is. And we'll get that stand out of the way. We also do have his parts. And uh, these parts can go, go together a number of different ways. First, you take that out of, uh, separate that out. And we're going to give him a thing that looks very much like a Megatron fusion cannon. But it's not because this is Machine Robo. And so he gets a cool looking gun there and he can hold that. And then you've got this one that can go onto the underside of his arm. And, and, and that's, that, that is pretty darn cool. Now, uh, his, his robot mode looks pretty good. But uh, one thing I'll notice is We've got the smokestacks forward. I don't know if it's years of looking at Optimus Prime, but I want them up. I, I feel like maybe they're blasters, and when he wants to use them, he can aim them forward and and shoot guys in the face. But uh, but for in in just normal use, I want them up. I, I like them better that way. Let me make sure that this is in really nice focus uh he's got a jason Voorhees triangle on his chest which i think is pretty awesome uh, i kind of wish he had a jason Voorhees mask now here's where i don't understand why this is this is a, a little bit of a, a, a how did they not notice this but you see that that uh, that linkage, maybe it's better that I show you from the back. So this mid piece that links the lower torso to the upper torso, it is pressed flat up against this chest piece. And it really gets in the way of him being able to move his legs forward. So so that's a that's a problem uh, it, it keeps you from being able to really rotate him at the waist and it's just in general very cumbersome now then here's the workaround you can just angle it back a little bit and then have this forward and now he has room to move and room to swivel his waist and get into all sorts of of cool dynamic poses which is important for a display piece style character like this because he's he's kind of amazing and he's kind of badass and you want him to be able to get into these kinds of i'm I, i'm gonna take care of business and uh and you don't want to get in my way poses so you know, he, he's cool, and you want to be able to take advantage of all of that articulation. But uh, but that little bit of whatever was going on, uh, it does make it a little bit difficult. I do really like this robot mode. The, uh, the body dynamics are, are both unique and impressive. He's got very, very long legs. Uh, as I showed you before, I just love, just love the mass of wheels around the lower legs. I love the, the very geometric chest and the hard angles and the flat surfaces. I mean, he's gorgeous. And if you're a fan of transforming robot toys, especially ones that are lesser known uh, and from third party companies, this guy is a gem. So, yeah, he's he's a lot of fun. He's, of course, got ball joints at the shoulders. I've already showed you how there's a swivel at the bicep. There's the elbow, a swivel at the forearm. And you can even, because of the way he transforms, you can even disengage that and tip the wrist forward if you want to. I don't know why you would want to, but you might. Yeah, you could. Uh, he's got swivels at his thighs. He's got uh, hip movement both out 
and up and down. He's got knee joints. He's got uh, very well articulated ankles. And like I said, he is solid. He is so much fun to play with. And that's that's one thing that that well you can put a price on it uh and i believe that the price is around what 80 90 bucks something like that uh 80 so yeah uh like i said not not for the faint of heart uh i would say that he is on par with a uh with a leader class maybe since the leader classes in transformers have been a little bit uh yeah they're kind of they, they, they're more like, a lot of them are more like Voyager class with some extra stuff added on. Uh, so I guess it's closer to a Commander class, which the Commander class, okay, Commander class is bigger. Uh, so he's a little bit smaller than Commander class, but a little bit bigger than Leader class. Uh, and he comes in at a pri price point right around Commander class. But if you're paying by the pound, then I'd say that you're doing pretty good because he is very, very solid. So that is tough trailer. Overall, I love this guy. Uh, I, 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 I don't think it's any mystery that, uh, that he's just a lot of fun. He's, he looks great. He's got a really cool transform, a really cool vehicle mode. He's got great weapons and he looks distinctive. Uh, I feel like he's the other Ultra Magnus. He's the Ultra Magnus that, that didn't get on camera after he saved a bunch of innocents from a renegade attack. So, uh, so yeah. Yeah, he he's really really cool, and uh, if you if you are a fan of the Machine Robo line or third party toys, then uh, then you you probably want this guy. I don't think that you'll be disappointed in him because he's actually really really awesome and fantastically play worthy. So that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this review of Tough Trailer. I think that that was way better than that crap I recorded earlier. Because let me tell you, it was dog meat. Okay, it was complete dog meat. And you know, sometimes you, you do something and you watch it and you think, wow, that sucked. So here we are bringing it back. We are a small channel trying to grow, so if you like our content, please subscribe and click the notification bell so that you know when more of these kinds of videos are coming up. Plus, we are doing live streams pretty much every Friday at Eastern Now Daylight Time in the United States because we do that whole time change thing that I, I don't understand. But... <sighs> Anyway, uh, this Friday, if you're if you're watching this before uh, March twenty sixth, Friday the twenty is it Friday the twenty sixth? Um, so if you're if you're watching this before Friday March twenty sixth, then know that on Friday March twenty sixth we are doing Dinobots Part Four. And let me tell you, folks are going to be getting together in this one. That's all I have to say. A lot of getting together. You know what I mean. So, this has been my review of Tough Trailer. He is really, really awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful evening. And, oh, I, uh, I hit that button. Well, I, I, I didn't really need to hit that button. Oh, tough trailer. Ugh. Darn machine robo, guys. Have a wonderful night. I'm Clay Carlino telling you to keep it retro, but... Yeah! Oh, I so nailed that! That was way better! Oh boy, it's a good thing I didn't post that crap that I ordered that I recorded before cuz oh, embarrassing. <sighs>
Where's my chicken wings? That was perfect.